residents' financial interests um, are protected. So upon registration, all retirement villages must appoint a statutory supervisor. <coughs> now just make mention that there is a clause where they can be exempt, but it's very uncommon. So just make sure when you're visiting different villages that they have a statutory supervisor in place. Um, and the role of the statutory supervisor, this, well they have a fairly broad role, but some of the common parts of their role would be to lodge a land-based security over the <coughs> village's certificates of title, um, to monitor the financial position of the village. So each year the village will have their financial statements prepared, they will be independently audited, and then the statutory supervisor will review those independently audited financial statements. Um, the statutory supervisor will also monitor for any red flags. So red flags is things like if it's taking a longer than scheduled time to carry out maintenance, that type of thing, or if a village seemed to be taking a longer than expected time to on-sell um, homes or re-license homes, that's the type of thing that the statutory <coughs> supervisor would be looking out for. Um, receiving complaints from residents. So there's a complaints process um, the first step is for the resident and an operator to try and resolve it. If it can't be resolved at that um, stage, then the second stage is to actually take it to the statutory supervisor and they will work together with the operator and the resident to try and come up with a solution. Um, and facilitating the annual general meeting. So each village will have an annual general meeting and generally somebody from the statutory supervisor will actually come to that meeting and chair that meeting. And during that meeting, they'll report on their role for the previous year.